to my channel. Today we continue chapter 2 forces and motion 1 on topic 2.4 initial part 1. So in this video I will discuss two learning standards. The first one is explain with examples the concept of inertia. Experiment to find relationship between inertia and mass. Look at the picture here. This entertainer is trying to pull a cloth. You can see on the table there are a few things. The, the entertainer pull the stable cloth is jerk, meaning pull very fast. So what you can observe here, the things on the table still remains at rest on the table. It does not move along with the table cloth. So we want to explain why the objects placed on the table remain stationary even though the table cloth under the objects is jerked by the entertainer. Why this happen? How to explain this situation? So this situation can be explained by using inertial concept. So you must be able to explain uh, what is inertial concept in order to explain situation uh, involving inertial. Now let's look at the definition uh, of inertia. Inertia is defined as the tendency of an object to remain at rest or, if moving, to continue its motion in a straight line at uniform velocity. Or in other words, you also can write as the tendency of an object to resist change in its state of rest or motion. Meaning, initial will cause the object which is at rest to continue at rest or object which is uh, moving will continue moving unless there is external force act on it. So this concept of inertia actually, uh, actually uh, very well explained by Newton's first law of motion. According to Newton's first law, it states that object will remain at rest or move at uniform velocity unless acted upon by an external force. Or we can say that the concept of inertia is only applicable when there is no external force act on the system or on the object. Okay, you can refer to your textbook activity 2.6. You can do it yourself. Right? This one is a very simple activity. So aim of this activity is to demonstrate the concept of inertia. Material uh, needed, glass filled with water. Fine and thin cardboard instruction arrange the material shown. Jerk the cardboard under the coin horizontally. You can pull it with jerk, huh? or you can push it here yeah, with jerk also can. Okay, look at this video. So this one is definition huh, for the initial also resistance to change in its state of motion. Now you want to carry out the activity. Same thing, yeah? we, have, we need a glass and coins and cardboard. The cardboard is pulled with jerk, so you can see the coin drop into the glass. It does not move together with the cardboard. So how does it work? You need to uh, pull it very fast. Eh? That's why we call it jerk. Okay? Then only you can get uh, the same result as this activity. Okay, now we want to discuss uh, number one. Why is the coin not moving with the thin cardboard? Just now pull with jerk or pull yeah? very fast. The coin remains in its state of rest due to inertia and fall into the glass. So when you pull the cardboard with jerk, the coin, the coin uh, has its own inertia. 
so inertia of the coin eh, will remain in its state of rest. Thus, it fall into the glass, does not move together with the cardboard. Okay, number two, what happens if the cardboard is pulled slowly? Explain your answer by referring to Newton's first law. If the cardboard was pulled slowly, there was frictional force between cardboard and coins. Meaning, you pull slowly, you give enough time eh, for the friction to be acted on eh, between uh, the coin and the cardboard. So the frictional force is also known as external force that acted upon the coin and cause it, causes it to move along the direction of the force. Hence, the coin will not remain stationary as stated by Newton's first law of motion. Or we can say that if the cardboard was pulled slowly, the coin will follow or move along with the cardboard because there is external force act. So when there is external force act, so the concept of inertia cannot be applied anymore. Okay. Okay. Now we want to relate between inertia and mass. The only factor that affect uh, inertia is mass of the object. Look at these two uh, objects. There's a bowling ball and football. Bowling ball is heavier than football, or mass of the bowling ball is larger than mass of the football. Is it easier to move a bowling ball or a football? Which ball is difficult to stop when in motion? If you have experience of playing uh, bowling, then you know. Huh? So bowling is very hard to throw also huh? because of heavier. And once it, it moves, it will continue to move, then can hit all the pins huh? at a further distance. So this one is caused by the concept of inertia. An object with a bigger mass is more difficult to set in motion or stop from moving as compared to lighter object. So bowling ball is harder to move and to stop due to larger mass or larger inertia. Or we can say that the inertia of the bowling ball is larger than inertia of the football. Now refer to the experiment 2.2 in the textbook. So this experiment is to relate between inertia and mass. Inference, inertia of an object depends on its mass. The larger the mass of an object, the larger the inertia. To study relationship between inertia and mass. So for this experiment, actually inertia cannot be measured because inertia is not a physical quantity. So in order to represent inertia, as inertia is the responding variable, so we can represent it by period of oscillation of the jigsaw blade. Constant variable distance between G clamp and processing. Apparatus, stopwatch, G clamp, roller and jigsaw blade, processing of mass 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60 gram. Arrangement, so clamp the jigsaw blade to the leg of table by using G clamp. At the free end of the jigsaw blade, attach a processing. Measure the distance between the clamp and center of processing, 20 cm. So make sure this distance is constant because we have constant variable distance between G clamp and processing. Procedure. Fix a piece of 20 gram processing to the free end of jigsaw blade. So this is the method to control MB, yeah, manipulated variable. Displace the free end of the jigsaw blade horizontally and release it so that processing oscillate. So this one horizontal uh, oscillation. Record the time t for 10 complete oscillation of the processing. Repeat 3 and 4 to record time t2. Calculate period t as t average divided by 10 and record it. Repeat step 2 to 5 using processing of mass 30, 40, 50 and 60. Let's say you have uh, carried out the experiment and this one is one sample of uh, data collected uh, from the experiment. So for mass 20 gram, the first uh, uh, measurement is 3.2. T1 is 3.2, T2 is 3.1. Okay. Then you repeat uh, the step by using 30, 40, 50 and 60 so you will get all the data like this. 
Then you calculate the average. How to calculate average? You take T1 plus T2 divided by 2. Okay, and write down here. Period of oscillation can be calculated as T average divided by 10. So you have this value. So when you record all data in the table, make sure all data are consistent. Meaning every column are consistent. For T1, one decimal place. So all are one decimal place. T2, one decimal place. All are one decimal place. T average also is one decimal place. Okay. Period of oscillation is secondary data because you calculate using the formula here. So this one you can record as a 2 to 4 decimal places and also must be consistent. Okay. So the horizontal oscillation in an uh, initial balance are not influenced by gravitational force. So this one is horizontal oscillation. So we want the jigsaw blade to function as initial balance. Okay. Let's say you plot a graph of T against M. You can uh, uh, try to plot uh, using the data in the table to plot a graph of T against M. So you get a graph like this, a curved graph. Or you can calculate the value of T square, then plot a graph of T square against M. The graph will be a straight line pass through origin. Okay. So conclusion based on the graph, based on the graph of T against M, T increases as M increases. Based on graph T squared against, against M, you have uh, T squared is directly proportional to M. So from here we can see the hypothesis uh, is accepted. Or the larger the mass, the larger the initial. Okay, So the larger initial will cause uh, the hexa blade uh, take longer times to stop. So Or we can say difficult to stop. So this experiment able to relate between inertia and mass. The larger the mass, the larger the inertia. Okay, discussion. How can this apparatus setup be used to determine mass of an object? Okay, let's say we, we use an unknown mass eh, of the object. So we want to determine the mass of the object throughout this experiment. So this hexaw blade or jigsaw blade can function as initial balance. Okay, because it can be used to compare mass. By plotting a graph of T against M, the mass of the object can be determined by interpolation method for certain value of period T. So let's say um, <coughs> you want to know the unknown mass eh, of the object, so you carry out the same experiment for the unknown mass M, then you record the value of period T. Then you, to find the value of the mass, you go back to the graph. Let's say period T is 0 0.35 second. So here is 0 0.35 second. So you just draw interpolation line and read the corresponding value of mass. Okay, let's say we get is from here is 2024. 20, okay, so meaning the unknown mass of value is 24 gram. Okay, so that's why we call it initial balance. As we know that we can relate mass to initial. Okay, the larger the mass, the larger the initial. Okay. Number two, explain one precaution to improve huh, the accuracy of the result. So this one is one of the idea for the precaution. Precaution is the step taken to increase the accuracy of the result. So eye level is perpendicular to the scale of what instrument involved in the experiment. So in this experiment, there's a use of stopwatch or meter rule. So eye level is perpendicular to the scale of stopwatch or meter rule to prevent parallax error. So this uh, precaution can be applied eh, for all type of experiment, but make sure uh, the apparatus eh, depends on the experiment eh, um, that carried out. Okay, so this one is all about uh, uh, discussion on the experiment. So for the practical exam, you must be able to 
design an experiment there is a question something like given apparatus so you need to design the experiment meaning writing the procedure of experiment so i will stop here my next video i will discuss on the situation eh, or effects of inertia in daily lives so um, i will stop here bye